So ladies and gentlemen, this, pa this pandemic has led to massive pay cuts and job losses across the world, India being no exception. Our next session sheds light on this um, topic and is moderated by Anshu Serene, Chief Executive Officer, Burgrew and Hotels. Joining her this afternoon are Ashutosh Khanna, Senior Client Partner, uh, Korn Ferry, Natwar Nagar, Managing Partner, Executive Search Hotelevate, and Toral Patel, Managing Partner, Accord India. Over to you. And Natwar is going to be joining in a minute, so he'll just be there. I was just wondering where's Natwar. He's just joining. All right. Over All right. To you. Thank you. Thank you, Samia. Hi, Ashutosh. Hi, Varun. Hi, Hi, Ashutosh. Hi, Ashutosh. So we we'll wait for a minute for Nat, uh, for uh, our guy to join in, but Natwar. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for listening to us. Thank you, Manav, uh, and the entire hotel team for having us over here. Um, Sunny, do you think that that will take I'm, a couple of minutes? I'm also enjoying the ISH hospitality at the ISH campus. So this is really cool. It gives me a, a, a chance to wear a jacket and step out and do <laughs> And you've been so missing it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Four flights a week to zero flights a week for six months. Yeah, not, not a good idea. <laughs> I know. The hotelier and the aviation person in us is not going to like it. The four flights turning to zero. Absolutely not. Yes. I'm certain they're sort of waiting for the day they can see Ashu back because he's always at the airport, from what I hear. <laughs> you get around, get around as well. I've seen you in more hotel lobbies and, uh, and airports than, than anywhere. So. Well, we try, we try. <laughs> <laughs> So, Toro and Ashutosh, since we have a short 30 minutes, uh, uh, Natwar is having a bit of a problem trying to log in, and I think he'll join us any minute now. Um, so, if you're okay with it, we could we could start, and Natwar uh, would join in. That that works for everybody. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, so, I think uh, the subject that the, what we're talking about is shifting lanes, and I think uh, as we all know, I'm not going to get into it. What are the numbers? What's the kind of gloom? What does the industry look like? Um, I'm not going to predict. Predicting is anyway very difficult, and that too, if it's about the future, I'm not doing it. So, uh, the reality is, it is in front of us. It's a tough industry at this point of time. It's a tough situation. There is no one facet that's going to change the way we are all going to look at the business. Uh, and therefore, it's going to require a whole lot of change, a whole lot of time. Uh, but what's most important here is that our industry is based primarily out of human capital. Um, and we are unfortunately going to end up seeing a lot of people be either displaced or concerned about where they are, what's the future, how is it going to go forward. Uh, and I thought that this was a great idea of Manav to having to put in this session uh, where, you know, it would be lovely to understand from you people who are the veterans in this industry that what is it that you think of, of the human capital in this industry? And what do you think are the opportunities that they could look at? What are the skill sets that we could talk about? What are the competencies that we could be looking at? And going forward, what does the, what does the horizon look like for, for all of us? So my first question to both of you, since you guys have extremely busy, I've been trying to get in touch with you guys and uh, you know, it's taken me time to get in touch with you people. So what's been keeping you busy? Because that's lovely if you guys are busy. So Toral. Uh, okay. Uh, you? So um, I think obviously like everyone else, the pandemic hit um, all industries, all sectors, everything we do. But I think what's been keeping us busy is a whole bunch of conversations, um, dialogues with clients right across industry sectors and obviously within the hospitality sector as well, uh, looking at what are the interesting nuggets that come out from different things, different companies, different industries, different people are doing to actually move this whole thing from uh, what we term the cry why try phase fly phases so you know we sort of put this together in an earlier session we did where we talked about four phases of cry why try and fly and 
we found we had companies that started the pandemic in the cry phase with doom, gloom, the world's going to end, how can this happen? Moved into a why phase, which was more about why is this happening to me, to my industry, to my company? Um, and then, you know, people started doing different things, innovating both with their companies and themselves. Um, and that's what we call the try phase. Um, and then some of them actually managed to move to the fly phase where they started coming out of the dark tunnel we've all been in. Uh, so it's been conversations about all of this and conversations about uh, searches, which we love doing. Um, and, you know, we've had a few of those as well. So that's been good. That's super. So you, you're saying that there is there is enough work going on and there are enough sectors that are hiring and there are in hospitality as well that there is hiring or conversations that have that have been happening well that depends how you define enough so so <laughs> but there are some there are some yes that's 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 hard thing. that's good to know what about you ashikosh yeah um so i think um i think the conversations with clients are um have, have kind of dimensionalized themselves a bit more. Um, on one end, um, a bit like, you know, the nomenclature differs, but I think we've seen um, some clients um, or some companies say, listen, I'm going to wait this out. One day this is going to go away and uh, then life will come back to normal. There's this other bucket that says, uh, no, no, we must be proactive and kind of cut costs, do whatever we have to. The smarter ones amongst them have now uh, pushed that those decisions down away from the management teams and the management committees down to uh, the general managers and so on and so forth. And uh, there are many of those who are now in the third bucket who are pivoting their businesses. Uh, what this has led to is actually a feat of uh, um, so this quarter is being um, 10 percent more than uh, the last quarter of 2019 for us. And the reason for that is we are finding a lot more companies changing their CEOs. Um, so if you read the papers, I won't get into uh, discussing client names. There are more CEOs today being changed uh, who in turn are uh, are, are changing their own top deck largely based on the fact that um, it isn't working if you're not willing to um, experiment, if you're not willing to pivot your business. So yeah, um, I'm, I must also say um, a lot of these, these, these companies belong to even if I look at the consumer facing sector, belong to FMCG, um, belong to durables, belong to retail. Um, none of them belong to the hotel industry. Um, I think therein lies the root of it. Uh, <laughs> I think the industry has always been very, very insular. It's always hired from within. It's always been a bit slower to, to really, you know, change its clothes and go out with uh, strategies. I think that's what's playing out. And during the COVID time, unfortunately, this industry um, is at the laggard. I just stop here. Hi, network. Hi, network. I, think he's uh, I don't think he can hear us. It's free. Okay, but that's uh, that's what I was saying, Anshu. So, um, Anshu, if it's okay, I'll add a little bit there to what uh, what Ashutosh just said. Um, Please go ahead. So, yeah. So, so you know, I I will agree that there has been traction, not just in the last month or two, but actually right through the last five six months. Um, so at Accord, we run something called the Moves column, the Mint Moves column every week, where we track all CXO um, level and senior management level movements. 
And I have to say at the start of the pandemic, we were absolutely certain we would have to stop publishing that simply because there wouldn't be anything to fill the columns. But uh, the good news is right through from the first week onwards, we've actually had a full column every single week. Um, and more recently, that column, you know, we've actually had discussions around, should we make it a split column with two sections? Um, or how do we actually fit everything in because it's growing that much? So there is movement, there is traction. Um, I will agree with Ashtosh that hospitality and allied industries have been lower on that end. But at the same time, there have been a couple of movements within the industry as well, including hires and not just layoffs. And the one that you published today as well has it. So that's right. Absolutely, yeah. So it's 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 actually really good to see that column that you know there are people that 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 are hiring. I just want to check. Natfar, are you back in? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear All you. All right, but can you hear me? Yes, we can. Super to have you. I told no you. hospitality session on search can can be over without Natfar being there. In fact, if you're a hotelier, Natfar should know you first. So so good to have you. Thank I you. was just asking them, Natwar, that uh, what's keeping you guys busy? Is there search happening in our industry? Are there movements? Are there anything happening? And uh, uh, both Ashutosh and Thoru were saying that while there is enough work that's going on, a lot of it in the consumer facing industry, not as much right now in hospitality, but there is some movement of sorts. What, what's your view? What's, what, what, what's, it, what's it looking like for you? I think so. God has been a little kind to us. Uh, uh, I think so. We've got some work out there, yeah. which is fairly interesting. Uh, as what uh, uh, Ashu was telling that, you know, there's more of replacement, which is happening at the key levels. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of pent up demand for service sector employees going to other sectors. And typically it would be retail, uh, not retail, uh, I think it's more in the real estate, uh, more in education, uh, uh, which we are finding very interesting. Uh, I think so. Uh, Going forward, I think the hospitality professionals will have uh, to reskill themselves to find some great jobs which are uh, out there in the market. Uh, I think it's, it's it's a little slow, but I think it's picking up. Uh, we've got some fairly very promising leads coming our way, uh, especially new hotels which are planning to open slowly. Um, so I think it's a uh, I'm a diehard optimist as far as the hospitality is concerned. So uh, I think so there would be work coming in. Uh, there are some very key positions which we have filled in in the last quarter. Uh, so I think so there, is, there is optimism out there. Yeah. That's good. That's super. But, you know, you brought out an interesting point that there are a lot of different sectors now that are hiring. And one of the interesting, because there are some of the usual ones like hotels, airlines, uh, customer relation, management jobs, etc. But you brought in a education which is really interesting uh, yeah. what kind of roles that do you think that people are moving towards or that there are opportunities that people could look at in in sectors like that so let me just share with you in the last one week we've i received a couple of calls from from the us and from uh, other markets where technology education setup is planning to to come into india the specific need is that someone who could be an all-rounder uh, and we did take take them through the the, the normal uh, scene of showing where the representations could be. And I think so one of the steps which they've highlighted is that hospitality uh, senior leadership professionals. And I was really uh, uh, positively uh, happy to, and I did ask them, and they indicated that I think so the quality skills what a hospitality professional brings on on the table is uh, far more well-rounded than the other sectors. So a technology guy would be fairly very, very, I would straight line in terms of understanding the product and coming out. But let's say when we are trying to manage various other aspects of the business, uh, so it was a very interesting uh, uh, propositions given by them and they are and let me just share with you, there are some of the big names out there in the market. So that's, that's, interesting. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. Like, you know, yeah. I've always felt, and I could be wrong on this, that uh, 
hoteliers have a very diverse skill set and a lot of qualities in them which would be favorable for many industries uh, but sometimes i feel that the industry does not really necessarily market itself well or understand what these competencies are and add up to those you know so there's a base and then you could always add up to it torul and ashutosh what are your views about it do you think that there are specific competencies that can be leveraged which are existing and what are the new ones that is going to emerge that you know you have people mandates that are coming to you people are looking for those so let me uh, let me take that one up i am in my work area um and i'm not averse uh, to being open to the fourth or the fifth before i hang up my boots um and i can only predict that whoever is uh, on this on this on this uh, zoom chat or, or, or on this forum if you're not open to having another two or three careers ahead of you then you know um give me a call right um because the fact of the matter is that uh, that that uh, increasingly whatever role that you're doing is going to pay you incrementally lesser and lesser so um yes when 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 i look at uh, talent i look at talent that is open to reskilling and uh, upskilling itself and what that really means in my language is do you have a learning agility do you have the agility to um, or the self awareness to learn from past experiences to reinvent yourself um in all our careers we've had um, jobs that are no longer that, that no longer exist so 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 the fact of the matter is um if you don't have ambiguity tolerance you don't have entrepreneurship you don't have um learning agility um your resume can look like whatever it does it doesn't really matter absolutely totally uh, want to yeah yeah so so i think i'll i'll jump in here so i think there are two parts to that question one is what are skills that industries at large are looking for um mm -hmm. and the other is what are skills that hoteliers um are known for or bring to the table good hoteliers uh, so let me start with what hoteliers are known for actually um i think what we've found is uh customer orientation um probably hoteliers are right up there in terms of that particular skill um process orientation so they're they're which is something that does not necessarily get highlighted as much but they're extremely process oriented everything has a process to how it's managed um managing logistics managing multiple things at the same time the quality focus that everybody talks about um when you talk about a hotelier which comes sort of beaming through um guess insights uh hoteliers are right out there on the front line and have some of the most amazing guest insights um from senior people across across india um and people management leadership skills is the other thing that good hoteliers at leadership levels are known for because they usually manage armies of people uh you know so these are sort of some of the things i think hoteliers some of the skills they bring obviously different functional experts will bring functional skills um and knowledge that they add to these and i guess the real question that hoteliers probably should be asking themselves is how do you translate those skills to either the industry itself as it's going through its change or to other industries that they may be interested in moving to um now i'm going to flip over to you know we've had perhaps about 6000 conversations with ceos and cxos since the pandemic started as a form um and we sort of try and draw together from that uh, on an ongoing basis just some of the things that we're hearing as skills that people are looking for regardless of industry so this cuts right across um so i think today first and foremost is a customer first orientation which guess what hoteliers are great at um there is the flexibility and the resilience that ashutosh just spoke about and i think um that is a very very important skill going forward um with everything that the world's gone through the ability to deal with pace of change which um is at a different level altogether at the moment 
Uh, the ability to roll up your sleeves and get things done. So I think the days of being an armchair CEO or an armchair CXO are gone. Um, you know, today everyone's had to get back in the trenches and get things done. Um, the adaptability to learn new skills, the empathy to deal with people going through very difficult times, the ability to multitask, the ability to problem solve, take quick decisions, and motivating leadership. I mean, just being able to rally the troops, keep them aligned, keep them enthused, keep them positive when there's doom and gloom all around you. These are skills that companies across industries are looking for in leadership talent uh, when we talk to them. So, so that pretty much sums up all hoteliers' talents right now. There you go. <laughs> there you navigate go. through all of that fairly well. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so I think the, the, the important thing here is that how do you actually uh, convert what you have already inherent or that you've acquired into something that you can use in different industries and be able to then take it uh, forward. But yes, I think the uh, very, very great point also that, you know, that learning agility has to be there, as Ashutosh mentioned, otherwise we kind of get stagnated. Um, that one, do you think that there is different kind of capital that's coming into the industry going forward? And will that capital therefore require a different skill set or a sharper skill set, which may require hoteliers to either educate themselves further or, you know, acquire a further skill set into an expertise, which necessarily they didn't do. For example, finance. And I'm saying as private equity institutional capital starts coming in, uh, yeah. the KPIs metrics may start changing eventually. What's what's your view on that? Uh, I think so. Uh... Uh, the capital uh, is waiting to to come over uh, there are some major transactions which are uh, currently as we speak are happening uh, especially in the real estate in infrastructure so even in the hospitality space uh, i think so the investments are being looked at um, and i i i personally feel the hospitality professionals the way they had their boost in the last 10 years need to just go back onto the drawing boards uh, reskill themselves in certain very key insights of how they could uh, could uh, manage this new fresh uh, approach, uh, especially uh, in the sector of, uh, I would say, infrastructure and real estate. Uh, something would be fairly very useful because uh, they understand the uh, the pace, they understand the development life cycle, they understand the deployment of funds. They are fairly good and sound in project management. Uh, so, so I think so. There is uh, definitely a need. So the, the only problem with the hospitality professionals have that they have never invested money in their own uh, education. They've always uh, felt that uh, things are absolutely normal. Uh, and uh, I take the example of you. Sometimes uh, I'm sure that you went ahead. You were a hospitality professional. You took a break. You went ahead and did some education out there. Uh, good, bad, ugly. We still remember walking down the Taj and, and discussing your career move. And I think you've done extremely well for yourself. And I think so. Uh, it's it's a great time for the hospitality professionals to go back and and redraw their own uh, uh, graph of, of of what they want to do. Uh, it, it's a great self introspection time. Absolutely, and I think it's so there is. And an unsolicited piece of advice, um, one, if you haven't learned how to write code, it's a good time to kind of, in, you know, um, good time to invest learning how to do that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, uh, one of that memo for the last three or four months, uh, I'll put it to you. You just do need to get more uh, digitally savvy. Um, irrespective whether you continue to remain part of this industry because this industry is bound to change as well. And it will change uh, this time around next year. We'll be, we'll be talk, probably talking a different uh, language of, uh, of skill sets and competencies. So do consider um, using this time when you do have some flexible hours. If you do have some flexible hours, uh, do consider kind of, you know, um, reinventing yourself from at least from on that from that one aspect so 
So let me just share a very funny, funny stuff which has happened. I got a call last night uh, from three tech guys out in the US. They are coming out with a product which will help the software guys to, to do their work much faster. Okay. It's absolutely the next level of, 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 uh, of technology. Uh, so it's a full stack development which is happening. So let's say if, a, if there, is a, there is a software guy who's developing a code, uh, along with five other people, uh, if you use this technology, it will help them to kill the time by few hours. So it's it's the next level of of, of what technology is 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 doing. Uh, so it's I think so. Uh, it's the most interesting time for the professionals in India to to sit back and just relook at their careers. Uh, I think so. Enough is coming out there. Uh, the next 12 months to 18 months, I would see that uh, Ashutosh and Oral are big guys out there in their own spectrum. But I think so they would be super busy filling in. And I don't think so. There would be talent who would be willing to go out and do a nine to six job. Okay. So half the good talent is waiting to go out and be their own entrepreneurs. Uh, so, so that's and it's something very interesting which is happening in this landscape. Which, you know, interestingly, there's so much that's happening in the tech space and the entrepreneurial space. And there are so many problems that are getting solved with various technology solutions, whether it is GPs that are now getting aggregated and that one can access, uh, you know, and, and there's so much happening in the pharma space today. It doesn't seem to be too much happening from the hotelier space for human capital in, 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 the, in that tech world, you know, in terms of monetizing it. Or do you think that there is? Oh, of course, it's happening. Just wait and watch. In the next two to three months, something big is happening. Okay, that's yeah, true. I, uh, I, I think a lot of hotel chains are, are working behind the scenes. Uh, you see, there is no better time to implement technology solutions than when you don't have a guest in your hotel. If you really yeah, wanted to upgrade yeah. software and so on and so forth, it's a great time. No one, I mean, you're not disrupting anybody's life. God help you. And a lot of them are. As, as long as they can afford the capex on it. But um, so, yes, I mean, absolutely agree. I think, I think like with most industries today, uh, this is an industry which is certainly going to see far more use of technology and digitization than it has in the past. Um, I think that the trick for hoteliers is how do you actually tie that in with operations and business processes um, so that it's not technology for the sake of technology, but it's technology that helps the operations run more efficiently uh, and of course with all the safety, et cetera, aspects. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big piece of what the industry is going to be looking at going forward. But I also believe there are other skill sets that the industry will value going forward as well, that perhaps were not the core focus all this while. Um, you know, and things like um, business intelligence, um, data scientists, um, you know, a convergence between revenue and marketing roles um, so that they work better together. Um, social media, using it more effectively to target uh, your customer base. Uh, you know, so there, there's data privacy is going to be a huge issue because as more and more of the industry goes um, online, you have to worry about data privacy because there's a lot of very sensitive data that will come on to the platforms. And today, at least the hotels are not really equipped to handle that perfectly. Um, so, you know, there, there's a there's a bunch of different skill sets that are still going to be valued in the industry, human resources. I think it was it was a, a function that was not perhaps valued as much as it is today um, when sure. you know a crisis like this has happened and they've had to really help uh, move that boat along in the storm. So so there are a bunch of non tech uh, skills that are going to be valued as well. Absolutely. And you very rightly said that I think it's also the effective usage of these different skill sets. So I think what we're hearing everybody say is technology, usage of technology, what are the different ways, how can it improve efficiency, customer relationships, retention, management, and so on and so forth. So effectiveness of technology and not just deploying it as a tick mark activity. 
um, engaging and upskilling yourself into areas that were possibly different, analytical skills to be able to apply that. So both the quantified part and the quali quality part needs to now start getting blended to be able to do it. Um, and I think uh, you also very clearly said that there are different other sectors which which actually value the skill sets that are there at Botelius. Uh, and we should be looking at that. I do want to take one very quick question from the audience where uh, Satish has asked that what role revisions should we prepare for as academics building future leaders? Uh, unless there's anything specific that any of you would like to answer on that, apart from what we've just covered. So I can I can take a shot with a few. I think uh, sure. one is definitely building building stronger technology biases into people coming into the industry than the past, um, oh. along with quality, customer orientation, et cetera, which was always core. Um, I think a second one is multitasking. So I think the hotel industry has traditionally been more specialist in nature, where you either were operations, housekeeping, or you were um, sales, or X, or Y. And I think that's going to start changing. Uh, and hence the ability to actually move across um, different areas in the space will start becoming more important. Um, and certainly, you know, using data more effectively is something that I see coming up quite strongly in the industry. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ashutosh, Natwar, and Toral. That's been really Thank great. You. Any. Uh, any further last thought that you'd like to leave? I think we're, we're, we're quite on time right now. So I hope it was insightful for a lot of our hotelier colleagues and that they look forward. There's not the end of the world. There's plenty more that's happening. Uh, these three people are extremely busy. Please do reach out to them for, for career guidance as well as what else that we could possibly do going forward. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you, Thank you, Anshu. Thank you. And um, the only comment I'll make is this too shall pass. Uh, hang in there. And, and, you know, we're all around to help if we can. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.